you're watching the alchemy workshop and this video I'm going to show you how to uh, do a hack basically on these old cry cut machines because they require a cartridge to work whether you're trying to use it as standalone or hook it up to a computer or use external software they will not work without any without a cartridge in there of any type um, they sell these little cartridges for it. Basically, it's just a chip that has different designs in it and like fonts. And I mean, for me, it's kind of useless. I'm not doing scrapbooking. I got this to be able to cut my own designs. That was my hope. And I got this like a year ago at a secondhand shop. It was 50 bucks in the box still. And it had everything with it. The power supply, these little boards, these sticky boards with paper on, whatever. And I went and set it up to use it, and it was like, oh, great, I need the cartridge. These are discontinued, and this company really seems to like to make things difficult. Um, they don't sell the cartridges for them anymore. You can find them on eBay or Amazon used, and people have totally jacked up the prices because of that. And the cartridges for me are pretty much useless. I'm, I'd never use them. I ended up buying one just to see if I could get the machine to work, and just found the cheapest one. It was still like 20, 30 euro. And it is not the right size. It's for the newer models. So that was a waste. Um, I kind of gave up on this thing. And luckily, I just gave it a try again yesterday and figured it out. I saw a few videos showing this hack. So you're basically shorting out the circuit where you put the, the, the cartridge. And it fools it into thinking there's a cartridge there. there. It does come with a cartridge normally. This did not have it. It's called like the George and basic shapes. Um, so yeah, I've got it plugged in, powered on. It shows the firmware. That's one thing to use external software. You will have to do is update the firmware most likely. And it says insert cartridge. Use Gypsy or I don't know why it's saying that, but you need to have any cartridge in there. So nothing works without a cartridge standalone or with the computer it's useless here's where the cartridge goes and here's where i'm going to explain the the hack now just a quick commercial uh if you like my channel and want to support it uh check out my etsy page it's alchemy kitchen 777 i'll put the link below uh, i sell handmade stuff so it's Stuff I do, blacksmithing, uh, I sell knives there, copper things, instruments, uh, take a look at it. Just launched a couple new t-shirt designs, which if you're here because of knife making or blacksmithing, you might like these. We have these in uh, a big assortment of uh, sizes and colors. So these are two designs, this metallurgica stuff. And this is a drop ship thing. So I had a friend help me make the design uh, when you place the order, the company prints it on demand and ships it to you. And they just give me a cut out of it. But I would like to see some of these shirts get out there. I'm going to order one myself, actually. Hit like, hit subscribe, comment. That always helps my channel grow. And thanks for watching. Now back to the video. Um, just to make it a little bit simpler so we don't have to count as far, I'm going to count from right to left. But you'll see there are... 10 slots with these metal connectors. One, two, three, four, five. We just have to use one through five. We actually want to just use two, three, and five. So we have to connect those to short them out. I saw someone doing it. They cut out a piece of cardboard and just stuck that in there and put some foil. You see, I did that. You cut it like a U-shape. The foil does have to connect around the top because it's, it's got to make the circuit. Um, I did that and it worked the first try and then I tried using some, I don't know, it stopped working all of a sudden. And I thought maybe it was, an, uh, yeah, it screwed up the machine, it was driving me crazy. And it just turned out this foil trick just, it came, it smashed in and it did not make a good connection so it kept going loose. Um, so what I just did now is I just cut some metal wire, you can use hair, uh, paper clip, whatever and put them in those same placements. So when I stick this in, I want to make sure they go in slot two, three, and five. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and power this off. You can do it with it on, but these are kind of loose. I'll probably improve this a bit. 
you can use cardboard. I heard, I saw someone suggest using like um, an old credit card, which probably would work a little bit better. I'm going to pause the camera so I don't have to do this one handed, but I'm just going to get that in there and make sure those three pins are going into slots two, three, and five from right to left. All right, I actually just took the wire out of the where it was taped just so you can see a better idea. I just, you know, it's got to be connected at the top. And I put the cardboard in anyways just to hold it in place. And let's see if I can get in there. You see slots two, three, and five have wire under it. And the little tabs are pushed back. Um, one video said it's not necessary to put the foil or connecting on the back side of the cardboard. So the cardboard just kind of holds it in place. And if I don't know if it'll still work if you're making contact on both sides. So I just kind of played it safe. One uh, disclaimer is I saw a couple, a lot of people say, oh, great, it works. And a few people saying it screwed up their machine that after they did that, it wouldn't read other cartridges. Um, if you already have cartridges, I don't know why you'd bother to do this. So I don't know, strange. So, you know, keep that in mind. If you're borrowing your wife's machine or something, you might screw it up. But it worked fine for me. We'll power it on just so you can see. shows the George and basic shapes card is loaded so basically I think what that is is that's already loaded into the machine itself that data and that's just trying to show there's a card in there I guess the guy had the original chip and figured that out just the pattern on the chip I don't know but it works and um, this will work a standalone with these whatever I mean normally the cartridges come with the actual keypad you put over these buttons because it'll change for what card you have in there I'll put a link to the actual what the keys do for this particular card. I probably will never use it this way. Um, what I'm doing is I'm hooking it up to my computer and using a program called Shortcuts A Lot 2. Uh, to get it to work with the machine, you'll have to do a firmware upgrade, most likely. And that can be done with um, Cricut Design Studio software. It's pretty simple, just follow the steps. And then you can get it to the firmware updated so it'll read the software. Um, that's probably, I mean, there's a lot of videos showing how to do that with the software. The biggest issue with that is because now I think there's shortcuts a lot version five. So two is a pretty old version. Um, the makers of Cricut, they filed a lawsuit or something against the software that made software to work with this machine because they didn't want people to do it. They wanted everyone to buy their stuff. It's kind of lame. So that software is no longer available. You can still find it if you know where to look for software like that. Um, <laughs> BitTorrent, but um, there I saw some talk in the forums mentioning a forum that, where they decide they figured out how to use it with a plug-in for the newest version five. Uh, there's videos on that, so I'm not really going to go into that. And this um, works great. I cut out. It's hard to see because I didn't. Cut, I didn't. I purposely didn't want to cut all the way through on some vinyl stickers that I'm using for acid etching also for electric etching as a resist and it came out really really I was surprised even the very small ones there's some that are screwed up I had to make some adjustments but even the very small ones um, the detail is like very very sharp I was skeptical it would work on something so small so this is awesome for making if you're gonna etch on like a maker's mark or something um, I did a test piece on copper and it, it really looked cool. Just throwing it in some ferric chloride acid mixed with uh, apple cider vinegar. Just one thing you want to make sure is that, you know, when when it's cutting, it does make some vibrations. So if, if um, this isn't in there pretty secure, that's where the cardboard comes in handy. It might get jiggle loose. And then you're going to start getting that stupid insert whatever cartridge error again. Now it's, I mean, it works. It's ready to go. Here would be the load tray, load paper. You see it's starting to work. I mean, uh, I'm not going to bother doing it right now, but it works. It cuts, and it does a really damn good job. Um, this is something I've been struggling with for a long time for making stencils for acid or electro etching. And now I can do custom designs. I don't have to, yeah, you just load in. Basically, with the software, you're going to load in uh, your own image as a 
SVG file, like a vector file. Or you can type, uh, you can use their, it's got fonts and whatever, but very, very useful. This is going to open up a lot of opportunities for me. Uh, here is what I etched last night, just as a test piece. And it was on a hammered piece of copper. It probably would be a lot cleaner if it was a flat piece of material, but I still really like the result. And that was like three cycles of 10, 15, 20 minutes or so of acid etching. So I have another one of these machines. It's a slightly different model. It looked almost the same. It's black and it's newer. Um, it's got the same 10 pin receptacle here. And I'm going to see if that will work on this one as well. Click it create CRV20001. Um, looks really the same from the outside, like I said, but I got this one used for 10 bucks, but it came just like this. Nothing. Didn't even have, I don't think it had a power adapter, but luckily I already had one. And even if it didn't work, I was glad I got it because the cutting blade on the other one was pretty dull. I'm going to see if I can sharpen it, but I was able to switch it out with this one. I'll maybe do another video on that. And I'm going to try to sharpen this one. So they're interchangeable, and when I put the different cutting blade in, it worked like a charm. Before that, it was tearing the material or not cutting all the way through. So the cutting blades do get dirty or they do get dull, and they have to be replaced. And that's another thing they like to charge a lot for. So I'm going to see if I can sharpen the spare one. Same thing here, we got that 10 pin connector. This is pretty dirty and dusty, but um, has been sitting in the hallway for a while. And I'm gonna try the same exact thing. And plugged in, you're gonna see, okay, you know, the display on this is a lot nicer. More buttons and stuff. Insert cartridge. So again, we cannot do anything without a cartridge. Um, I'm going to plug in my same exact little hack here and start it up and see if it'll work on this model as well. All right, got my hacked cartridge in. Let's power it up and see what happens. And again, same pins, two, three, and five. We have success. Works on this version too. This model. Yep, that's that's just a load and unload for these stupid little trays. They're like these sticky trays you put your paper on and put it right there and load. So it works. And um, here's a tip. I'm using this vinyl. It's a brand from the same company I just happened to find as a roll. And when you try to stick it on here and run it through, I was finding, I thought there was something wrong with the machine at first. I don't know if you can see it in here, but you see like that area here, it was cutting way, way off and it kept screwing it up more and more on some smaller samples I tried, like there, really inconsistent. And it basically, this stuff is like a sticky surface and it still was moving it um, and causing those problems. What I found is you don't need these stupid trays if you're cutting vinyl. Just put the vinyl directly in, feed it like normal, and it will cut just fine. The settings I found to work ideal for this were three, 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 somewhere around there. Because of course with a vinyl sticker, you want to cut just through the sticker part, not through the backing where you see it did on some areas when I cut too deep. So you got to play around with the settings a little bit, but around three is good for the speed and the um, pressure. Um, this is something to do with the number size, so I don't think they even really, or the font size, I don't think that really matters if you're using the external software. And there is also a dial on the actual knife. You see there's that arrow here, and five is, or six is the for the blade to go out the deepest, it makes it more shallow the more you roll it back. So I think I had mine around four. You play with it a little bit if it's not cutting exactly like you like. 
It's going to change for the thickness of the material you're using, of course. I'll do a video maybe separately on just using this for vinyl. But I had quite a few people ask me how to do this, and it took me a while to figure out. Um, I'll put as many links as I can find for you uh, for the software. Because like I said, you can use a standalone, but if you have the software, it gives you a lot more options. It's just they like to make things difficult and not let other software work with their machines that are obsolete because they don't make them anymore and they don't make the parts for them anymore. It's just, they just want you to buy their new shit, I guess. So that's that. Good to find a fix around that. Because, I mean, I was tempted to just buy one of their newer, nicer machines that are considerably more money. And it looks like I don't need to. Thanks for watching. Till next time.